How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's NASCAR DFS Pick Show. I'm your host, TK Nation 47, joined with Mega Roller 31. Mega, Josh Berry, the GPP play. Um, I'm going to take a good old, you know, tip of the cap for that one. Um, but came away with some money on that. Um, just unfortunate to see John Hunter Nemechek go down. We would have won a little bit more money in the Xfinity race. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? And what did we learn? It didn't seem like there was a ton of passing. It seemed like a lot of the guys that started up towards the front stayed up towards the front. So, I mean, if, if you watched the video yesterday, you asked me what I thought about it. I was like, uh, I don't know. It, it was it was a tough build. There are a lot of options. But as, as I look at this one, like literally took me three seconds to build my cash line. <laughs> and I yeah. think three seconds was debating between two guys. <laughs> yep. And the, the other five were pretty obvious. So, yeah, um, yeah kudos to you, like, for um, – I had some Barry, but not as, as much exposure as you did. I was um, – my GPP line, I tried to get more of uh, Gregson, Algaier, mm -hmm. and uh, Hunter Nemechek in there. And just – I had too much Hunter Nemechek. It killed me. But yeah. if you watch my baseball video today, my punt catcher that I recommended <laughs> just hit a home run at 2K. So I am good tonight. So Yeah, that's great feeling when you get that 2K punt catcher play to, to go off. That's that's a good feeling. I love it. Um, yeah, I had a lot of Barry with, um, you know, the, 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 the standard guys in that were Allgaier and Brandon Jones. And that really cashed. Uh, pretty significantly high and um, all the John Hunter Nemechek exposure that I had was kind of dead. Uh, but that one lineup kind of made it all for me. So I got lucky there, but uh, that's kind of what has to happen sometimes and uh, come away with some coin. And uh, we're going to pump that back into the Daytona uh, Daytona, the Dover race um, for Duramax dry den 400. We got 400 laps. we got a lot of dominator potential here in this race some fast laps to even come away with. Um, as you mentioned, hard to pass uh, in that Xfinity race, I agree. Uh, so track position, track position, track position. And that's kind of a weird thing to think. That, and, and then we're going to sit here and tell you about how we're playing three or four guys from the back. <laughs> so um, do you want to start in the back of the pack and kind of no, work our way to the front? I think, think we just start up top and go down. Um, okay, let's start up top with the surprise pole sitter, Chris Busher. Any interest? He killed me last <laughs> week in, in, in Dega. Um, no, yeah, was, I, I, I brutal. It, it's the same debate I had like with Eric Jones. Like the play makes sense if it's hard to pass, but I don't think he's hard to pass. So I could definitely see Hamlin or Larson. <laughs> getting by him or Elliot early on or Blaney, like the four guys behind him are like all dominator candidates. Chris Busher is not. And, and right. again, they could have potentially just set up this car for the fast lap of qualifying to make sure that they, you know, got a good position there. And if track position is key, but does he finish in the top 10? Probably, but mm -hmm. 6,400, a lot to, pick him and if he falls to like 20th is it going to like end your day probably not because it's only 6400 it's not like you know um chase elliott or larson at like over 11k doing it but i don't know I, gpp i, I can't even cash so my theory here is if busher finishes inside the top 10 and he does lead a good portion into the beginning of the race yeah, that 6400 price tag is going to get paid off, even with the negative track, uh, negative, um, you know, place track, place to thank you, place differential. Uh, so I do like him in that regard if you, you know, think he can finish inside the top 10. So I think that's GPP thoughts and theories. I don't think that's a cash perspective. So I'm going to have a little bit of them in the pool. I won't totally fade the pole sitter here, not at that price. Uh, Denny Hamlin, uh, 9500 has a lot of good races here and a lot of bad races here. Um, or no, that I, I believe that was uh, Chase Elliott. Excuse me. Denny Hamlin has um, in, five, in the last five races, 335 laps led. Um, he also has, you know, three days of uh, sensitivity training coming up. So um, he also <laughs> look at the board there. Look at the board. He has the lowest 
point DK point per race out of anybody. Yeah. Harrison Burton's higher than he is. Yeah. Wow. Cody um, Weir is higher than he is. Yeah, I think I think it's the next gen car. Mm -hmm. um, Which is know, so ironic was... because when we did the preview, we used his car as the example. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's kind of it's kind of just I'm unsure if if he's going to be able to do what he's done at Dover in the next gen car. And I think he might. So I'm going to have exposure. But I think we know we both love Kyle Larson here yes. sitting in third. Yes. And he's, he's got the dominant car in practice. Um, in the last three races, he's got an average finish of second with a win, 400 laps led, getting back into the sweet spot, right? I think what's going to end up happening is he's going to get out and just pull away, and then the other ones are going to be racing for, like, second, and it's just going to allow him just to, to go out there. Like, I would not be surprised if he leads, like, 60% of the laps here. And usually when that happens, even at this price tag of 11.8, you can kind of build your, your lineup more constructed towards a place differential and one dominator or like, you know, maybe one and a half if you want to go with another guy maybe inside the top 15 that, that could potentially lead a couple por 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 portions of the race. But if you think a guy like Larson's going to lead every lap, then the rest of your lineup just needs to be focused on most – floor potential points as possible yeah um, that, that, yeah I, this yeah. is almost like i feel like this is shaping up to like a kyle bush truck race mm -hmm. and just larson's the substitute yeah of that yeah i i think denny can challenge him or at least early on for lead laps or le laps led um i think both of him and bush are gbps larson's a clear-cut cash i don't know what to do with chase i don't either like i see a lot in the industry like the buzz is like really high on him too almost like he and larson are going to share this race like 50 50 but i don't know like chase is is good at certain things more like manufactured road courses mm -hmm. um but he really hasn't done well on like ovals or anything like in in a circular motion where you're just making left turns so yeah. i and the Hendrix cars are fast, but I, yeah, he's just, okay at super speedways. Um, yeah, I just don't think of him at like Dover or like you know, even though he's led some laps and he's got three top fives in the last five races, but he's also got a couple of really bad races here, and yeah, I, I think, think it's risky gonna... at eleven three be top five in ownership though that's why i have the chalk next to him i think he's gonna probably be, under, be underweight yeah definitely yeah if he's gonna be pretty chalky i'm just gonna make the decision to go all in on larson sprinkle in some maybe you know other plays along the way and and just hope that chase doesn't beat larson to the early dominator clean air track position kind of you know build uh Next two guys I think are pretty similar, and that's Ryan Blaney and Alex Bowman. What are your thoughts on these two? I think that they give you a little bit of a discount off of like Larson and Elliott. I think both of them have been fast this year. Blaney especially. He's probably been one of the yeah. fastest cars, even faster than Larson, because Larson's had some struggles at some of these tracks. The thing mm -hmm. with Blaney is like he he could be up there like top three most of the race, and then he ends up wrecking or something happens like towards the end of it it just never seals the deal bowman sure. on the other hand is the one that just hangs around and then when everybody else wrecks he just takes over and be like oh thank you very much look what i yeah, found he's actually done that here um i'm gonna go with bowman over blaney here uh average finish of sixth in the last five races he has four top fives and a win with 114 laps led looks really comfortable at dover um, give me Bowman. I like him over Hamlin. I like him over Chase. I think he's going to be like my contrarian GPP um, 10K guy that I try to go dominator, dominator with, with Larson. Or maybe just even like winner of the race and Larson just leads 60%, like you said. 
uh, just a good old fashioned back end Bowman uh, kind of win. Um, your thoughts on Ross Chastain at 8,600? I mean, speaking of guys on games. fire. Yeah, yeah, true. But like, I got to give him props because he won a race at Talladega and didn't wreck anybody in the process. Just stayed straight. That was like the most yeah. non Ross Chastain thing I've ever seen him do. And he actually won. So, yes, yeah. we're going to give him props. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, he's been in good form. Track house has been fast. And like you said, with, um, track position being very key here you, you can't afford to lose any and i think with the speed that they've shown it this is a really good program like we saw it starting to bud last year and it's really blooming and i, I think they're for real no i'm not yeah. putting them in the same breath as like hendrix or gibbs at this no. point but i do think that like, you know they're maybe approaching like penske territory sure yeah and penske um, has had the struggles with the number two car this year. And, you know, Logano hasn't had as much success as he normally does. And it seems to be just the Blaney show. I mean, Chastain, what a season. And uh, Justin Marks for Trackhouse. Uh, I'm certainly going to have him in the player pool. I've learned my lessons. I'm not playing Ross Chastain. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and go with him. Now, the next driver, same, uh, same manufacturer, but dealing with a little bit of an injury here and yeah. question how long 400 laps is going to do on that brake toe. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Sweet Juarez has a really, really bad, I don't know if it's broken or bruised. Um, left foot, left big toe. So that's it's right on the brake pedal. Um, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and just fade anyway because of starting position. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, that's I, I think that's definitely fair. Um I I think he's starting too far forward. Cashing just it we'd probably like probably three, four weeks ago we would have said, hey, he's starting too far forward and put the fade tag on him at eighty six hundred, but he's shown us a lot. Suarez hasn't as much. And with the injury, I, th I think it's a an easy, easy fade there. Same thing with Wallace right below him too, not his mm -hmm. type of track. Mm -hmm. Um qualified really well but i just don't think that they can stay up here with some of the other guys that i think um are going to march their way forward i think they lose at least five positions if not more i agree next up is kyle bush 9100 is a really cheap price tag i'm not ignoring that gotta love this gpp play yep always a gpp because he could win it or he could finish 30 he, weeks. No, yeah, he, he i mean anybody can do that but he just seems the epitome of doing that mm -hmm. and the thing is, is bush doesn't have to dominate any part of this race at that price tag yeah. 91 and 9100 all he's got to do is just back into another one <laughs> yep love it all right uh kevin harvick 9300 a lot of success here in the last five races a win at four top fours average finish of third but we got a new car true True, and it's not twenty. Not in a conundrum here. I don't know. So yeah, I I like it. I'm I could sprinkle him in a GPP, but yeah. I I don't think that um I definitely not touch him in cash. Well, you know, we were going through some scenarios here. You have to play Byron. You have to play Gilland. You know Burton, and then you make a decision with another punt down there. And then you're kind of just left with, okay, is, is Larson your guy? And then is it, you know, one of these guys that are starting in the 20s or are you going to go with the second dominator? You know, you make in your decision there. Some I'm going to do with, you know, guys starting in, them tw in the 20s in like the 9K, 10K range. And then some I'm going to go with Bowman, you know, Bush, Harvick, just kind of just spread it out. But I'm always going to have that same core four. So this is going to be a really, really good three entry, 20 entry max uh, kind of slate. Um, any thoughts on Cindric at seven, three? I got, I got last, nothing. I last, him a fade. Last man in like, all right. I, I, I don't know. think he, he's, she was okay here in Xfinity. I think he's going to have low ownership. Um, he's been you know, racing I, pretty I, bad. I like, yeah. I like him better than Bubba Wallace. Um, it's crazy. He's kind of priced in no man's land. So true. Yeah. He, yeah, he is actually. That's a good point. He's not low enough to reach. 
even if you were going last man and he's, he's probably just not even going to land on him right so just going to forget he, he exists in this race uh i actually like this next driver ryan priest um really good driver just could never find a team that was willing to give him enough attention uh he's rick Ware racing slash Stuart haas racing you would ask you you had told me before pre-race a little bit of the rundown of what's going on with that 15 car any other thoughts on priest i think at the price and i think he could definitely probably with his speed and everything even though it's a rick Ware car could finish top 20 so even if he loses seven positions Still yeah. finishing 20th is going to give you positive points. Let me just bring that up here. So that's 23 points. So you get, you get 16 points for him finishing 20th. Yeah, and I don't think that's a terrible Yeah, at 5,700, definitely I'll take it. Right. Uh, next up, Justin Haley seems to be qualifying pretty well, but not finishing races. So yeah. no thanks. Um, at 5,500, starting way too far forward. This next guy, Rookie Stenhouse Jr., doesn't have much success here at Dover. Also in no man's land in that 7K range. I'm probably going to be out. Yep, same. Yeah, just doesn't do it for me. Uh, next up is Kurt Busch. Um, raced pretty well last week before he got taken out on the last lap. Any interest here? Um, I, I do see a lot of buzz on him. That's why I project him and have high mm -hmm. ownership. I think he's a GVP is like I said, a lot of experience here, but he's sure. producing in no man's land. I really just, I don't see a build that I really get to him or need him. So yeah, I'd like I him better be if out. starting like 25th or something. I think he's yeah. starting almost like 10 yeah. places too far forward. Yeah. You read my mind. Uh, and I think for that reason, I'm going to be out. And if he is high owned, I'm going to be happy with, with that result. Um, next up is Christopher Bell, um, starting 17th, 8,100, just a little too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, have... you, if you have 7,100, but it's a Gibbs car, so you're never going to see that. And Bell has had some success this year. He's run fast, but he's also run into some walls, and it yeah. seems like he qualifies well, but then falls back. So I just, mm -hmm. not not yet. No, I think this is another one I might be out on. Uh, this next driver, though, I'm all not all in, but I'm 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 in for sure. Truex Jr. starting 18th, 9,800. Um, top, you know, an average finish of fifth with a win here in the last five races. And, and this is where, like, you know, I said my lineup took me three yeah. seconds to make. So, like, is this is yeah. easy. Larson, Byron probably Gillian Burton as value plays. And then the three second debate was between Truex and Logano and yep. then throw whoever else fits in as your six to final driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I do like Truex track history here, but don't have his recent form. I do right. like Logano's recent form. I know he crashed at um, Dago, but he always crashes in plate races, but yeah. Um, yeah. But he's got place differential, and I could see Joey Logano winning this race, even from 22nd position. So mm -hmm. um, Logano had an average finish of, or no, a lap average of 20th, and Truex was 12th. So I think I lean Truex here, my personally, but I'm yeah, you're almost saving a thousand bucks too. What's that? You're almost saving a thousand dollars too. Right. So. For that reason, I'm I'm leaning Truex, but I'm certainly going to take a shot at Joey Logano because I agree he can win a race, um, mile track. He's kind of good at those short track um, ovals. So um, next up we have AJ Allmendinger in 19th, 6200. It's a decent price tag, but I don't know. He's going to be super popular in FanDuel, and I, I get the play there. Here, I I, I don't think you really want this because you could, if, if you're there, play Cole Custer, who's starting 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't the AJ Allmendinger from Xfinity. It's still a right. Cully car, but this Cully car is not as good as the Xfinity one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, how did he do today? Didn't he? Maybe he was at the end. Yeah, he wasn't. I know he wasn't top five because Ty Gibbs was the only non 
um, junior motorsports car that finished in the top five. They had a very impressive six. day. He finished sixth. Oh, that's not terrible. No, but um, it was – He had fourth. He was fourth in lap averages. But it wasn't Dag. I think it was – and I don't think it was – it was because of Bristol before that, but maybe the race even before that. So three races ago, like we were so high on Almendinger, um, mm-hmm. and like this car just wasn't fast. It just yeah. wasn't doing anything. Yeah, their, their race trim has been a real issue so far this year. I've been good in qualifying. The race trim has been abysmal. Because I, I remember putting him on the cover thinking, okay, you know, he he did really well in Xfinity and he'll do really well in the cup one. And the car just did not have the speed. He was like laps down. Mm-hmm. Maybe save it for when he's at the road course. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. Next up is Brad Keselowski, 7,700. Not a bad price tag here, to be honest. Did really well in lap averages in the practice run. Um, any track history here on Keselowski? Oh, uh, it's just average finish of 11. He got the pole somehow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked good. So maybe Roush Fenway has a little bit of speed. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Yeah. He, I'm going to have him in the pool. He's on my say... number again list. I, like, I don't care if Brad <laughs> Kozlowski wins this race. I don't care if Brad Kozlowski wins the championship. Oh, just, my God. Don't. No, I don't even want to hear him. that. Please no. I don't like him either, but I might have him in the pool this week. Uh, Corey LaJoy way starting too far, too far forward. Way, yep. way too far forward. Mm-hmm. Usually a Corey LaJoy truther, not this time around. I love the price tag, but yeah. no thanks on the starting spot. All right, we talked about Joey Logano a little bit. Any more? Anything else to add? No, like I said, I think he can win the race from 22. He's pretty expensive, so I think – that's why he's only got medium ownership and not high ownership. But I think um, he's a nice pivot off of Truex, like $800 or more. So your last mm-hmm. man in is going to be um, a little bit lesser than some of the other guys that you could get. You're talking probably the difference between a 5K and a 6K guy. So Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I, I like uh, Joey. Going to go with him in some lineups. Chase Briscoe, 8,300, kind of in that. Uh, Christopher Bell, Ross Chastain discussion. I think right. I would lean Chastain. I, I would, but if I didn't have enough, then I'm okay with Briscoe. He was mm-hmm. decent here in Xfinity. He's shown some sparks this season, too, and he's one of the ones that's really figured out how to shift these cars. And I don't know this is like, true. how much shifting is going to come into play. But if it Absolutely. does, like he he started like mastering the shifting of this new car way back in the clash. Yeah, and maybe he's just like an auto play on short tracks. Yeah. Just because of that theory alone. All right, he's in the pool. Good call. Um, probably gonna not play this guy here, Austin Dillon, starting 24th. Like Actually, I got pretty good history here. Does he really? Let me let me check this out. Okay. Average finish of 15th with the top 10. He's starting 24th. So maybe he's good for eight spots. Yeah. Okay. 76 is bad. I, yeah, I, yeah, you're I right. like him over Cindric and Bush. Yeah, yeah, I agree there. I definitely agree there. And Suarez. Yeah. And Bubba. He might be the 7K play that you can trust. Him and Kozlowski. <laughs> um, Did you really just say that? <laughs> no, where's, where's that's the why I laughed. <laughs> Where's the mute button? (laughs) Bye, TK. I'll finish this on my own now. (laughs) All right. All right. Um, Starting 25th, Eric Jones, uh, 6,800. I like it. He's he's had some speed and he's definitely, you know, he, he, my heart broke. Like, I, he should have won that race. Like, and Petty, like, this, the push, is it their hundredth win that they're, or, 200 300 i don't know it seems like yeah. Richard petty won 300 on his own so <laughs> i'm gonna have to uh pause it real quick if you can uh my sump pump is going off <laughs> the alarm hold on no problem sorry for the technical difficulties oh. uh disaster struck um mega cut his arm my sump pump alarm was going off and um yeah pandemonium broke so 
we'll restart this back with Eric Jones. Um, yes. I like to play. Mega likes to play as well. Um, yeah, go ahead. Anything else to add on Eric? Like I said, it just broke my heart that you didn't win that Talladega race there. Like he was yeah. out front and just made the wrong move. And I just, I, I, and I said this earlier this year, he's going to win a race this year and he's going to be in the playoffs because he won a race. And he's, he's been on the cusp. He's been like, 17th in the standing so I, I really like to see him win to seal the deal but I, I think you know he's the one that's going to get petty whatever the milestone is I, I think it's 100 but it doesn't make sense because I think like the king has probably won like like I said 300 races on his own so gotcha. whatever it is. so I'm going to take the whole you know disaster chaos is like a sign I'm not sure about Eric Jones <laughs> Okay. There might be a wreck. There might be a wreck coming for Aaron Jones this tomorrow, but he he makes sense. He makes a lot of sense. Running really well this year. Um, you're getting a decent price tag. Uh, I've landed on him a couple of times in some lineups, so uh, I don't mind it. Uh, Tyler Reddick starting 26th, 8800. Uh, I think he has a lot of good potential for place differential. Uh, I like him to try to make the high line work here at Dover um, and be able to pass on the outside. I think that gives them a little bit of an advantage. And um, I don't know there's that Stuart Haas. Um, oh no, he's Richard Childress. Yeah. You only have two guys in the AK range here. So it's yeah. here Chastain. So, I mean, you, is it place differential or current form? So, but again, mm-hmm. most builds you're not going to end up there. So for some reason, like, Whenever I think of playing Trace, Chase Briscoe, I think, well, I'm going to have to play Tyler Reddick too. Cause like they've been hand and foot about how well they've oh, done. Sorry, this I season. missed him. There's three guys in the AK range. Good, good, yeah. good, good call. Yeah. I, I mean, we were just talking about Briscoe and I was looking down, thinking of Tyler Reddick here in a little bit. I'm like, well, there's some place differential there. And, you know, Tyler Reddick's had some really solid. Well, there you go. Start your lineup with Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and Tyler Reddick. I guarantee you'll be different than anybody else. And then yeah. see who else fits in there to finish it off. Then throw see some of the talking guys in. See if you can maybe reach to like Denny Hamlin and just hope Denny Hamlin has like some Renaissance day. And oh, yep. You hmm. know, maybe yes. maybe there's a theory there to some balance builds. Um, so. I think it's viable. Um, next up is Eric Almirola, sixty six hundred. This was my one debate in a in a in a big lineup. I was either Eric Jones or Almirola. After the craziness that just happened on us with your elbow and the sump pump alarm, I feel like I'm leaning Almirola just based on the on the ghost theory. <laughs> Come on, the ghost theory. I like real. Jones. Like Alma Rolla, I play on like certain tracks. Like I like him on New Hampshire. I like him like probably like Phoenix. But what a similar New Hampshire. The only like, similar track to this is like Bristol without the yeah. dirt on, I think. Yeah. But um, yeah, Alma Rolla is gonna be in the pool. GPP, um, for sure. You know, has a tendency to not show up. This is his last season racing. So I feel like there's going to be a moment in the season where we start to get, you know, pressure on Elmer to perform well. So we can yep. New Hampshire. go out. Yeah. All right. So we're just waiting till New Hampshire. For Isn't it right before the end? Like it'd be yeah. the one where he wins there again and he makes the playoffs and there you go. the sunset finishing 16th out of 16th. Holding up a big lobster. We'll just wait for that. Um, all right, next up is Cody Ware. No thanks. No, looks too far forward here. I mean, yep. GPP for the price if you need it. It's it's better play than LaJoy. It's better play than McLeod. It's better play than Bullocky in a backup car. So, mm-hmm. And there's Rick Ware that brought, you know, Priest in for maybe they have a lot of good setups. You know, maybe right. they put a lot of money into this race. Maybe that's why he qualified so well. So. Maybe there's some thoughts there to that. but Well, if four of the guys didn't rack, he would have qualified 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> true. I mean, it's true. It is true. So take that theory for what it is. Uh, Michael McDowell, 5,200. He's, he's, he's interesting here because he has actually top 25 most of the races here. So he's going to move up at least four places, I think. Mm-hmm. 
And at 5,200, like I really like it in cash. I think it's a pretty, pretty safe play here. Um, if you want to put pivot off of like Gillian and Burton, or maybe you need all three of them. If your your other three guys are going to be 10 or 11 K guys. Okay. I agree. Next up is Cole Custer, 6,100. I'm okay with this also, just because he's not a horrible driver and he's down in the toilet yeah. bowl range. You know, he does have an average finish of 10th. Two top 10s here. Yeah. Maybe this is his style, a track. And I don't think he's going to be – I think he's going to be higher owned than the rest of the guys down here that aren't really? the top guys. I think he might be forgotten. Yeah. You know, with all of what's going on pull. behind him. He just had a poll a couple weeks ago. Sure. Maybe he's the solid GPP pivot. You know, over this next guy, Ty Dillon, um, or is Ty Dillon going to be the GPP pivot off of Custer? Uh, I, I think it could go either way. Uh, but cu- I feel a little bit more safer with Custer based on, you know, just some speeds, now track history. Uh, Ty Dillon doesn't really have much going for him this week. Other oh, than, good other than, yeah, he has. He was yeah. he was up there last week until he just, he got wrecked. So, and he showed some speed. Like he's not a bad driver. I think he's no, yeah, a he's comfortable a return. This f- extra car in the Petty Series has been good. Like with the GMS backing. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I think people are going to be jaded on him a little bit too. Like low ownership. I really like him and he's ends up like last man in on, in a couple of my builds so mm. uh, okay um there was another petty gms car we were talking about eric jones, jones. yeah you said no <laughs> well i mean i'm gonna play eric jones i'm just now nervous after what happened at at that time slot there but uh yeah i'm gonna have some ty dylan and cole custer no bj mcleod for me no nope um all right, here we come to the main part of the show. Um, unless you're here for some blood, we have William Byron, 11K. Yeah, I he had a really good shot at like winning this, but he wrecked um, backup car, I believe. It is a backup car. Yeah, Him and which, which is fine. It's back. a Hendrick backup car. Like they're, they're, oh, yeah, their yeah. backup cars are just as good as anybody it's as their primaries so no, not not be better than the first car and backup car combined of the spire car so yes, absolutely <laughs> yes. so yeah william sure. byron um i've already seen it across the industry going to be super high owned we're wondering is this going to be the highest owned driver of the year to date denny was uh, over 50 percent uh shout out to uh there's i believe dfs sniper on twitter I saw one of his tweets. I got to give him a shout out here. He had a, a cool tweet that um, um, Denny Hamlin was over 50% owned at Daytona. And he said, is William Byron going to be higher? So I possibly, that's quite interesting yeah. question. Could be the highest owned of the year. Seems like everyone tapers off around 45, but might stretch it past that 50% mark tomorrow, even at 11K. That, well, I, I think what keeps the ownership down is the people that are like 150 max these things. So mm-hmm. like he's, he's not going to be in a hundred percent of player pool. So that drives ownership down a little bit more. And then the novice that play DFS and play the rake every single week, they just don't understand how it works and they don't play like plays down here for place differential. They're playing to win. Like, so mm-hmm. they're, they're trying to pick the, guys or, or they they're have a lot of biases and play their favorite drivers so but yeah i, I think I, I think he could be over 50 percent. I, I think he could approach 60 percent. so um, mm-hmm. like i said when i first did this i didn't i only had eight cash plays with the three primes after i kind of re-looked at it again i came up with a few more cash plays um that yeah, you cash know, is going to be 2v2 yeah. 3v3 tomorrow for sure most likely 2v2 uh, so it's going to be hard on cash games tomorrow. Uh, Todd Gilland starting 34th. I think 38. Not think going to a backup car, but did make a lot of contact with the wall in practice. Yeah, I, I think finally, I like everybody's going to have Burton as their prime play as the third one. 
I'm going uh-huh. with Gillian. She has to be a little bit different. I mean, there's some lineups where I'll have both of them in there. There's some lineups where I'll sprinkle somebody else in. Um, mm-hmm. Just uh, maybe some Ty Dillon, but I just – I really like him. I think he's a really good driver. And 34th is like both these guys, Gillian Burton, their prices are egregious. They're priced like um like BJ McLeod, like Quinn Hoff, like um mm-hmm. yeah, it's some of the other true. guys that have um come in and raced in years past. Um trying like Brendan Poole and sure Gildan. Um I mean pricing is pretty soft and then you just have like super high 11k drivers it's like what kind of spectrum are we running here i mean gillen has had some success i mean even eric jones at 68 is like silly so it's just i don't know pricing is a little weird to me this week it's like landed castle pricing it's just yeah Yeah. it's so low yeah gillen definitely a lock for me tomorrow uh, Harrison Burton, although Same. terrible, but man, 5k, 5k, yeah, that's insane. For he Wood should be 7,500. Any other, or, any or other driver even, in the Wood it, Brothers, maybe car. even like 7,000. Like, any any other Wood Brothers driver right now is, is at least 7,000. He's just that bad in this car, but. Going to a back? No, no, he's not going to a backup car. They're fixing damage. He's gonna have to start from the rear, which is basically just let Balicki slide in front of him. True. I don't know. Yeah, I have to play Burton tomorrow. Yeah, it's not gonna feel fun. But even if you're fixing like a backup car, like the aerodynamics really don't matter that much. Uh, it's not like it's a drafting or so. Yeah. All right, and Josh Balicki. No. Backup car, Spire. Yeah, nope, I'm out. Uh, be be shocked if he could get, you know, anywhere close to not being two laps down before the end of the first stage. So, um, no for me. All right, Mega, anything to add here on uh, Dover? No, I, th- I think we pretty much covered it. Like we, Larson, Byron, the two punts, and then figure out what other dominator you want to throw in there. And then, your last guy in is whoever is the best decision in that price range. Yep. And then don't forget our balance build here for some GPPs with plays like Briscoe, Reddick, maybe Denny Hamlin, maybe Kyle Busch. Uh, so, you know, those kind of that kind of salary relief, you can kind of compile it all together with the same core value plays. I think it makes for an interesting build, um, especially if Kyle Larson doesn't dominate the whole thing. But uh, let's get you stitched up, Mega. Uh, let's get the sump pump fixed, and um, we'll we'll call it a day for tomorrow. Um, good luck, and you can follow us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is at MegaRuler31. Like this video, comment below, and in the bio on our Twitter handle at FSI underscore DFS, there is a link to the Discord chat. You can get any updated projections on any kind of news that we have throughout the day. Uh, You can get the core lineups and any live chat advice for your lineup banking. So good luck to you guys and good luck to you, Mega, and everyone have a good day.